Hi, this is James Scott with Born the Buy. In this episode, we're reviewing the game Architects of the West Kingdom by Shem Phillips and S.J. McDonald, published by Garfield Games. One to five players, ages 12 and up. Takes about 60 to 80 minutes to play. You'll recognize the uh, name and the uh, stylized art probably right away. This is the same uh, designer who had did the North Sea Trilogy. And after playing this game, I hope uh, this is going to turn into a trilogy too. Uh, and I'd like to thank Mr. Shem Phillips and Garfield Games for providing Board in the Bayou with a review copy of this game. And Architects of the West Kingdom is a worker placement. You're going to be playing architects trying to gain favor of the king. And you are probably going to be some of the meanest architects I've ever dealt with or been around or seen because these architects are nefarious and are going to be doing whatever it takes to gain the favor of the king. In the game you will be given a player board of your from the various characters of your color and you have your regular side and you have your advanced side which on the advanced side each player will get a different little ability after you get your player board, they're done on this this uh, thick cardstock uh, type material. It was really kind of nice. They have you get your twenty meeples, and yes, that's twenty workers. It, it may sound a lot, but you bear with me, and you'll see why. They also included in this character, which is for solo play. This will be the AI, which. You have the normal side and then you have the difficult side. A bunch of cards, a bunch of tokens, which we'll get as we go. And then everything is going to be done on this player board. And see how well we can do this with a green screen with all this green. But it's worth showing the size because this is a nice size board, not, not too overly large. Fantastic art. Uh, I just love this art. They, uh, the board is really colorful, really nice. All, everything really pops, easy, e easy to understand, iconology. On this one, it's going to be a simple place a worker, take an action, next player's turn. Just like a worker placement. This one has a bit of a twist. Well, one of the things I really do like here is up in this upper left corner, you have the guild hall. In the guild hall, this determines how the game ends. Once the guild hall it gets full, depending on the, the amount of players, is how you place them, will determine the game end. When you place a worker in here, they stay there permanent. You can never take them out of here. And you use that to either build a, one of your buildings, which we'll get in a little bit, or do a cathedral action. Cathedral actions are, they'll show right here next to it, you see the cathedral. If you can do that step above, because everybody's actually going to start right below it. If you can do the step above it, then you will move your flag up. And as you're, you're going to be going up, and this will look, give you in-game scoring. And now also, too, on the side of the board is a loyalty track. You'll be moving up and down on this loyalty track. Those are what the purple flags are for. Advantage, disadvantages of moving on the track. Well, if you start moving up the track, everybody's going to start at 7. You start moving up the track. Once you get above 10, you can no longer use the black marker. But if you're above 10, you also start getting in-game victory points. So if you end up above that, you can gain it. Now, early game, you may want to drop your loyalty down. Once you drop your As you drop your loyalty down, now you're going to be able to pay less in taxes. That sounds pretty good, and it is. It just, some of these loyalties are not too easy to move up and down, so you may may not want to drop too far down. Now, some of the different board actions are your, your general gather resource ones. You have your forest and your quarry. You'll place a worker. For every worker you have on that location, you'll gain one of that resource. Clay is a little bit easier to get. You get one clay plus one worker on that location. Now, if you notice, there's also at the mine, you can also get, other than clay, you can also get gold. 
Gold is you get a gold for every two workers you have on that location. So a little bit harder to get. The other gathering one is the silversmith. And you get a silver plus one silver for every worker you have there. So as you can imagine, you get four workers there. You go to put that put that fifth worker there, you gain now you're gonna gain an extra five. So it can really get good. Problem is you don't really want to put too many workers there. Why? Well, because another player may go to the, the town square and go, hey, locals, here's some money. Let's go capture these guys. We, you know, for they're making uh, rumors about your guys. So they can pick a location, go and take all the workers from one color, capture them, and put them on their board. And if you notice on your board, you have a little spot on your board, a little capture of this. And this is where you keep all your captured uh, workers. Later on, there's other stuff you can do with them. And while they're on another player's board, you can't use them. So, a good thing to do. Now, it would neat little twist, and you may not think of it at first, but yes, you can capture your own workers. So, if you're getting short on workers, you can go to the storehouse, and I guess in this case, you'd be saying, hey, can you go gather up my guys and send them home and, and get all your workers back on your board? You have your tax stand. Now, as you plan on these different locations, you'll notice a lot of these locations have the, the silver coins are in two colors. They're the reddish color and then the, the normal brownish color. The reddish color means they're taxes. All taxes get paid into this tax stand. Anytime you can put a worker on that tax stand and you can gather all the coins that are currently in there. It's almost like the free parking and monopoly which everybody always did with a, it's the same same type of thing you put your workers there you take all the silver the only problem is now you're taking all that money you don't look bad if you see you lose two loyalty so that drops down the loyalty the other thing you can do is the king storehouse you can go there and trade in various different resources to put a worker there and for every worker you put there you can take an action so you need to take two of any of these three combo and increase your loyalty. Or you can take three of any combination of this bottom part and to gain a marble. Marble is the hardest one, <laughs> cute, hard, is the hardest resource to, to gather, you, as you can see. The other thing you can do is the black market. You go on the black market, you have three different spots. Now the black market is a little unique Black market can only have one worker per location. On um, this far left one, you put a worker there and it's one silver, lose a loyalty, and the card that's on that spot, you gain those, those resources. If you put it on the middle one, you pay two silver, lose a loyalty, and you can gain any apprentice on the board that's available, or you can buy, uh, draw five building cards and keep one. And I'll explain why it's so advantage of, of grabbing any of the worker, uh, any of the apprentices. The last one is you pay three silver, lose a loyalty, and you can get all these resources, which is the four of them. So that, that's, you're paying a little bit more, but you can get all those resources. Every so often, there's to be certain actions that will happen that will reset this black uh, the black market. When it does, you get your workers back. These car these cards change out. You take this the one in the the small side. You flip it over and put it on the uh, the big side, and you put another little one here. The other thing you can do is the workshop. In the workshop, you can this is where you can hire apprentices and buy more car uh, building cards. Your apprentices is what it's going to be you need for building most of your buildings. Now, some of the buildings, if you'll notice, don't have too many resources on. So we'll have on your buildings, you'll have on here a list of this is the resources you need to spend. And this is the type of skills you need on workers to be able to do it. And you only need, you only need to have one of each type. So... And then at the bottom, we'll tell you the advantage of the building. Most of the buildings are generally what you pretty much figure. Trade in this for that or make some locations better. You know, like the, now whenever you forest, you may get an extra wood there. If you go to the core, you may get an extra rock. Or 
may t be able to turn two rock in for silver. There, there's a lot of different buildings. But the, all the big thing too is on it is the end game victory points. And as you remember, you have to put your workers in the guild hall. So as you're building these buildings, you're also speeding up the end of the end game. So you want to pick, choose these wisely because you're only going to be limited to a certain amount depending on how many up there. But you want to make sure you, you get at least some of them out there. Then the other thing on this board is your apprentices. And on those, the, each one will have a little ability, which, like the buildings, will heat, like this one here, will can turn three clay into one marble. The, she can turn one silver into two rocks. The other key thing is, is in this upper corner tells the skills they have. So you need those skill, those skills to make those buildings. So once you have each of them out, don't let this sickly old looking labor fool you. In my humble opinion, this is the favorite, most powerful card in these apprentice decks. Why? Because he has all three symbols and he just... No, nobody would think about it. you buy this card now you, you can build any building as long as you have the resources so I, as soon as this one hits the board and there's one in the deck as soon as this thing hits the board I guarantee you I don't care how much it costs I am buying this card the other uh, things like I said now if you notice on in between the rows of your apprentices is one meeple two three four workers Depending on how many workers you buy, or you play, you have placed there depends on. It will tell you which row you're going to be able to get your apprentice from. So if you're only have one worker there, you can only grab this first this first row. If you got two, you can grab the second row, etc. But you can bribe. You can put a silver coin on the ones you skip. So if you want this one in the third row, but you only have two workers there, you put one on this first one. That way you skip over and then you start counting your, your amount of your workers. <clears throat> the final area on the board is the prison. And this is going to be one of the uh, big important ones. On the prison, you get when you put your worker there, you're going to get one action per, per worker on that location. Some of the actions you can do is you can pay a silver to take all the captured workers from your the you have on your board and put them into the prison so you've got them all arrested and thrown into prison well why don't you keep them on your board well you'll see down here at the bottom right of the prison is this little symbol here showing that black market reset when the black market resets for every for all the different workers in there you're going to be losing loyalty if you have the most workers in the prison at the time of a black market reset you will earn a debt and in order to learn to whoops got on the wrong side if you have a debt you'll lose two victory points at the end of the game you know if you pay it off you'll actually gain one so you, you kind of how do you pay it off well that's another action in the guardhouse well the other one, the second one, is you let your guys free. You go to the guardhouse and say, hey, my guys are innocent. They're let free. Simple as that. Get all your workers back. The other one is you pay five silver to, like I said, goes to use, you know, those red ones. They get, those go into the taxes. And you will pay off a, or, I'm sorry, I take it back. I, I, read, that, I read that one. You either pay five silver or you take a debt and lose a loyalty to get back all your workers on a location from somebody's board so if somebody's got your workers captured that's how you could free them so i guess you send the prison guards out to, to free them the last action is six silver three go to taxes three goes back to the bank that pays off your debt you flip your debt from unpaid to paid and that's pretty much the simplest of it 
The other things that come with the game is the rule book, which is done again, fantastic color, great artwork, lots of samples, every board location is described in detail with plenty of examples at the bottom. There are, you know, quick little setup rules, the end game scoring. There's also a, another little book which will have the apprentice abilities, your buildings effects, the rules for solo play, and the uh, some variable setups if you want to set up uh, using the advanced side. And then there's, if you're for your solo players, you've been kind of curious on the solo use of these cards. Now, you can use this AI also too on a, you can use two players and pl also play with this AI if you want. I haven't done that one. That's the only way I haven't really played it yet. But on these cards, we'll have different little instructions on what to do. I love it. They're, it works great. On normal, it, I, I would say I would put the normal at a little more easier. The hard, yeah, the hard will give you a little more run for your money. But I found the normal not, not too bad, not too bad to beat, which don't get me wrong, I do it's good, especially when you're trying to learn the game. The other thing is the rewards. I forgot to mention that uh, when you uh, anytime you work on the cathedral, you also randomly get one of these little reward cards and it'll tell you what type of reward you get. Uh, components. Excellent components. They're all great little wood. They're all wood. Comes with little baggies for each one. The wood looks like wood. Clay, clay looks like clay. The car stock is real nice car stock. Again, it's got that satin I call canvas finish. The it's got the all the different little cards. Uh, even the little ones that got that finish on it is real nice beautiful board i mean uh, yeah I, I can't say enough on how well i like this board easy organized sm compact the box it's if you you've played any of the north seas you'll know he likes these smaller boxes and i do too i mean less shell uh, uh shelf space it's simple it all fits in this box no extra you know extra room no reason to, to have all air take up a space on my uh, shelf I think probably the if I had a complaint about the game, I, re I really can't. I mean, I, it's got to be one of the best done worker placements I, I've seen in a while. And I would probably be my um, one little minor gripe is on the single player, you got the male and the female. Maybe having the male and the female, I, I guess that'd be a gripe. Maybe the gold could be a closer. It's kind of a little orangish. It's kind of I call, I call them cheese. <laughs> uh, maybe if it was a little more gold looking. I mean, that's really that's that's really digging. I'm digging deep for to try to find a complaint. I I really can't. Real done. Plays well at all player levels. I, I love I love it at solo. On hard is what, is what I enjoy it at. I, like I said, I found the. Uh, the easy of uh, the normal i call it easy it definitely easier especially if you, you you know if you want it's a little spoiler go for those victory points get get them out there work on the cathedral you you'll it makes it a little bit easier uh for player count wise two players i might i might only play one on two player and i find it is a little a little bit slower you know you kind of you don't really mess with each other but you get four or five players and you really start messing with other players this board gets starts getting full of workers everywhere it seems like everybody's going con constantly to town hall to get somebody arrested and capture their their workers and it, it is fun it is it is definitely i will say it, it is a take that game you will you will be messing with other players you will be capturing them, throwing them in prison. They'll be setting themselves free, using your own workers to capture capture your own workers, so you can get back more actions. 
it's just fun. I, I really enjoy it. This has been James Scout, Board in the Bayou. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe below. Thank you.